All right, we made a very fun list today. I made a little list of six things that beginner photographers should totally ignore. Now, there's so much information when you first start photography that it's just overwhelming. So these are the six things that you don't have to worry about for now. And stay tuned till the end because I'll give you some things you should worry about. <laughs> Now this could be hard for some of you that like to shop and like shiny new things, but there's incredible value in the used market. One example is the camera I started this channel with, the Fujifilm X-T20. This camera's getting a little old. It was released in 2017, but till this day, this is my favorite camera to go and walk around and shoot with. Um, and right now you could get it used for 350 US, maybe 400 in pristine condition. And there's incredible, I actually like this used camera, which I purchased for about $400, more than some of the newer Fujifilm cameras that are being released now. Another example of this in the Fujifilm realm is the X-T2. Again, $450 maybe, $500. The new version of this camera is being sold for $1,500, $2,000. And uh, so these cameras are weather sealed. They have buttons and dials. They're great to learn photography. But I recommend getting a used camera to start out. Don't be distracted by all the nice, beautiful, shiny things being sold. Hi. Now, most people buying cameras today are buying mirrorless cameras, but don't overlook buying a used quality, like it was quality maybe five years ago, <laughs> uh, a DSLR. A DSLR, the lenses will be super cheap, and also the camera bodies are cheap. And these are bodies that people were like shooting weddings with, like three people still shoot weddings with some of these cameras. And everyone's kind of dumping them now. So there's a lot of DSLRs on the used market. The one thing I won't recommend is buying like a super cheap plasticky consumerish DSLR. You can get some older pro DSLRs with that take amazing photographs for a few hundred bucks. I would say if you're strapped for cash, a pro DSLR from a few years ago is the way to go. Number two, the second thing to ignore when you're getting into photography is fanboys and brand loyalty. If you start researching cameras and reading comments and going to forums, you're gonna get all kinds of people, of course, and the most helpful people have tried different brands and can kind of steer you in the right direction, but the least useful people are the people who are blinded by just one single brand and love it no matter what. Uh, so be on the lookout. Anyone who's like really angry about a camera or like puts down another camera brand, those are usually fanboy, fangirls that are kind of, it's, it's never girls. It's always fanboys. I'm in a thumbnail. This is going to be the best thumbnail ever. Number three, megapixels. Ignore megapixels to a certain extent. Don't be buying like a three megapixel camera, okay? The sweet spot for cameras seems to be around 16 megapixels to 24-ish, 26, 30-ish. There's a lot of high megapixel cameras on the market, 45 megapixels, 50 megapixels, 100 megapixels, and for most of our uses, especially if you're a beginner, you're not gonna notice any differences between 16 and 100 unless you're printing and looking really close or you're zooming into the picture. The other thing is the, the higher the megapixels, the more storage you need. It slows your computer down when you're trying to work on your photos. So um, think about that too. Number four, ignore full frame versus APS-C. I would, if you were a beginner, I would probably invest in an APS-C camera to start out with because they're usually smaller, they're cheaper, lenses are smaller, um, there's a lot of them on the market, and you could start working on your craft. Now, personally, I like both. I like APS-C to keep my kit small when I'm walking around traveling uh, or, or doing street photography. Definitely APS-C, smaller uh, sensor size, smaller camera, and itty bitty cute little lenses. However, for my professional work, I shoot a lot of indoor, I shoot a lot of portraits, uh, I shoot in low light. That's when you should start thinking about full frame a little bit. Next, zoom versus prime lens. Which one should I have? It really doesn't matter. Zoom versus prime, just make sure the camera has a lens on it so you're, <laughs> you're able to shoot. 
Uh, the, I think the next step after you get good with photography is starting to understand which lenses work best for what you like to shoot. So if you buy a camera that comes with a zoom lens, that's totally fine. Just use that. I think the next step after that is to maybe pick up a cheap prime lens because what you're going to see is when you get a prime lens, uh, it, it's like this like window is opened up where you see that your images are sharper, a little crisper, and also you get better at working with just that single prime lens focal length and it makes you a better photographer. Now I will say if your lens is a zoom lens that's a variable aperture lens, like for example, on the wide end, it's a 3.5 ap aperture, and then you zoom it and it goes to 5.6. Those lenses are usually cheaper, not really well built, don't have the best optics. I'm just generalizing, but I would invest in maybe a third party lens that stays at 2.8. So if you want a zoom lens, get one that's maybe a Sigma or a Tamron or just a third party lens that stays at 2.8 and you're gonna see your pictures are gonna be really gorgeous. They let in more light, and uh, you don't have this variable aperture that changes as you zoom. That's so annoying. Camera color science. You're gonna read all this stuff about which camera has better JPEGs and better colors and better. <laughs> They're all good. That's all personal preference. So you may grab a camera that everyone says has amazing skin tones, and then people look orange to you. What I would do is go to DP Review. That's a great site that has a lot of sample images. I would go to DP Review and they even provide raw files on there. I would download all of those and try to see which ones you like to edit and look at, which colors you like the best. That might be one way to go as opposed to listening to all the fanboys about their color science. By the way, I'm really enjoying Nikon's uh, Z6II's colors. Yeah, you should probably just buy this one. Brand new camp. No, that was a test. Okay, and the last thing to ignore as a beginner is all these people that say you have to shoot your camera in full manual mode to be a real photographer. Ignore that. I love to shoot my camera when I'm walking around on the streets in what's called aperture priority mode. Look at that light right there. You see that right there? That is locked to automatic shutter. That means as I'm walking around, the camera is picking all the shutter speeds for me. The only time I tell the camera what I want it to do is if shutter speed is part of my, my creative uh, decision. So if, I want a, if I'm panning and I want to shoot a biker and everything be blurry in the background, I will change my shutter speed to something smaller. But I'm not shooting full manual all the time, like deciding on the three. Um, a lot of people also shoot auto ISO. And so the camera picks an ISO and with the great ISO performance on most of these cameras, it can go from 200 to 1600 and you won't really be able to tell a difference. So it's okay to shoot your beginner camera in a semi-automatic mode or even full automatic mode, which is one of my favorite ways to shoot. Just let's talk about the things that are more important. Ignore all that and think about lighting, Think about composition. Think about taking really good, compelling photographs that make you happy. That's more important than all this other stuff that just gets you all confused. All right, I hope that was helpful. I'll see you guys next time.